Hey, this video, Georgie. This is Georgie. He's our rescue dog. He came from Puerto Rico, but I adopted him when I lived in New Jersey. So when I first graduated college, I lived out in New Jersey for a year um, for my first job out of school. Um, but then Alex is actually a year younger than me. So when he graduated at Penn State, um, I moved here to the farm that we're currently living on, which is his mom's. So. This video is gonna be a little bit different format than what we normally do. We are normally doing a lot of DIY videos, but we thought it would be fun to start sharing, um, doing some vlogs and sharing some more about us and kind of our journey and how we got to where we are and where we are going to be. So um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy. So I'm headed down to my garden. It's quite a walk. It is on the other side of the barn from the house. And I brought my coffee with me, mid-afternoon coffee. I am a big coffee person. Um, I'm gonna show you my mug once I set this down. Um, but yeah, so my garden is quite a bit away, but it is a way to get away from the everyday life. So at this point in the day, this is the only shady spot near my garden. My garden gets full sun almost the entire day. So when I record my videos, I always try to do it first thing in the morning so I can beat the sun. Um, but I wanna show you my mug, cause how cute is this? It says, stay grounded. My friend, one of my best friends from college, she gifted this to me with a plant one, day, one year for my birthday. We actually have the same birthday, which is just crazy in itself. Um, we met our freshman year when we were studying engineering. And um, so this mug is super special and I love the message. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, but I kind of wanted to just talk about how I got into gardening and how gardening has had such a positive impact on my life and has helped me feel free from my eating disorder. So this isn't something that I've talked about publicly on our YouTube, but I have mentioned it on our Instagram page. So if you follow us there, you are probably familiar that um, I have struggled with an eating disorder for most of my adult life until this past year. So, First, let's talk about how I got into gardening. So whenever I was, so, so back in 2018, I became a Whole30 coach. Now, during this time when I became a Whole30 coach, I met this awesome friend and her name is Lindsay and she started to encourage me to think about where my food came from. And so through that, I kind of started learning about factory farming and row crop farming and it made me realize that I wanted to have the skills to grow my own food so that I could know where it was coming from, the labor that was associated. I just wanted to, you know, be able to provide for myself. So in 2019, I started a garden and through that experience, I found that I really, really enjoyed it. I loved learning about how the ecosystem works together between the insects and the plants. And it has just become this passion for me. And it's kind of weird because when I was a kid, I was super passionate about sustainability for as long as I can remember. I'm talking when I was in middle school, I remember being at a field day event and everyone was about to leave the track and field where we had just done this like, I don't know, Olympic event type thing. And there was water bottles just sitting everywhere, all over the field. And I remember getting all my classmates and being like, nope, we're not leaving until all this is picked up and we're gonna put it in the recycling bin and make sure it goes to the right place. So that was me in middle school. And then in high school, I convinced my senior AP physics, physics class to build an entire Christmas tree out of recycled cans. It ended up turning out awesome. And we did it as a way to kind of, you know, promote re recycling and uh, celebrate the holiday. So that was really fun for me, but I've always been passionate about sustainability and I never knew how to foster that passion and how to put it into something that was useful until I started gardening. And now that I'm here, I'm realizing, wow, every aspect of gardening and homesteading is truly living sustainably. And so um, it's been, I think that is part of why I'm so happy with where I'm at with gardening. But I also wanna share a little bit more about what I mentioned earlier, which is my eating disorder. So the only reason why I can talk about this is because I am in a place where I am 
much bigger than my eating disorder and the struggles I've been through. It's taken me a long, long time to get to where I'm at. So this did not happen overnight. But anyways, a little bit of backstory. So when I was in high school, I was diagnosed with anorexia. I became anorexic by restricting my food and over-exercising. Um, at that point, you know, the goal was to be perfect and you know I just had a lot of things going on right but it took me about a year to recover from that and I'm so thankful for all of the friends and family and the support that I had during that time because I probably wouldn't be here I don't know if I would be here if it wasn't for those people so thank you to everyone who believed in me um, and got me to where I am but anyways so it took me about a year to recover from that and, and when I say recover from that, I mean from a weight standpoint of like, okay, I am to a healthy enough weight that I do not have to be in a hospital. Because that's where I was at. Like, I was at 100 pounds. I'm 140 pounds right now. Oh gosh, we got a tractor coming by. Oh no. Actually, it's just the garbage man. So, pause for a second. <laughs> um, so, anyways, I was at a point where I was at you know, 100 pounds, I was about to have to be an inpatient in a hospital. It was not good. Anyways, it took me about a year, year and a half to recover from a weight standpoint, but from a mindset standpoint, I never truly have re had recovered until this year. So that is 13 years of struggling with an eating disorder. And um, there was a long time there where I thought I would never recover. And so if you don't know anyone with an eating disorder or maybe you know someone of an eating dis that has an eating disorder but you're not close with them, you probably don't know some of the habits that someone with an eating disorder has. So my family, Alex, and some really close friends know those habits that I had and since then a lot of that has changed. But um, when you struggle with an eating disorder, like for me, when I would wake up first thing I would do would be obsessed about what I was gonna eat that day. And it wasn't just, okay, what am I gonna eat for breakfast? Like, how am I gonna cook it? Do I have the ingredients? No, it was like, how many calories are in this food? If I eat, choose to eat this, uh, am I gonna work out today? If I'm not working out, I can't eat that. It was obsessive. And it wasn't just that day, it would be I would obsess about events that were in the future, and I'm talking weeks in the future. I remember in, I think it was 2017, sitting down with my therapist and saying, you know, it's a tradition for my family on Christmas to have cinnamon rolls, and it gives me a lot of anxiety, and I just don't know how to handle it where I can, you know, sit there and enjoy the cinnamon roll. And so it took us, I think, three months to figure out a plan of how I was gonna eat a cinnamon roll on Christmas Day in 2017 and that's not the type of place I want to be spending my time and my energy but I didn't know how to get away from it and I just had you know it was ingrained in me I had been doing it since I was 14 years old I knew I know exactly how many calories are in one almond it's just insane how obsessive I was over things um, and so yeah, so anyways, that's the extent of how bad my eating disorder was. And with an eating disorder, most people deal with body dysmorphia. And that's where you think you're a lot larger than you actually are, or maybe you yeah, you just have a dis disordered vision of what you look like to other people. And um, since then, a lot of that has kind of gone away for me too, but they were both very, very prevalent about a year and a half ago which I would have thought with COVID it would have gotten worse, but the opposite happened and I believe it to be from my gardening. So how did gardening change my view on food and my view of myself? I think what I value now has changed drastically. I value where that food comes from, how it was grown, how it was raised, how it played a role in the ecosystem of the environment. Um, and my focus has changed to that. And my association with food has completely changed. It has changed from calories to 
Like, it's just like, what is this? And how, like I said, kind of where it came from and what's the nutrition value of it? How can I be more self-sufficient with this food? And how can I optimize the amount I'm growing? And it's just kind of completely changed. And I don't know, like I can't put a finger on exactly what happened, but I do know that last year, right around this time, actually a month, you know, in August, around August, 2020, is when I realized something had changed in me. My sister had a bridal shower and typically, for something like that, I would be obsessing weeks in advance of what food was gonna be there. I didn't even think twice about the food that was there. I just showed up, I had a great time. I remember people saying that I looked like the healthiest I've been in forever and I seemed so happy. And like, I truly believe that that is attributed to my gardening, our goals towards sustainability, where we're going with this YouTube. Like I have just kind of figured out who I am, where I'm meant to be. And I'm so excited to share this journey with everyone because there were some times where I wasn't sure how I was gonna make it to the next day. And here I am like creating five year plans. Like I'm excited. Um, and so <laughs> that's kind of, you know, how it's really helped me with my eating disorder and I guess I can talk a little bit about like our goals or my goals for the garden. Um, for the garden, I'm hoping that over the next several years, I can really implement some permaculture practices where I don't have to manage some of these pests as much, where I can do um, companion planting, optimize that and plant more flowers, encourage more pollinators, just kind of make it more of an ecosystem than just planting vegetables to eat for myself or for us. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of where I see my garden going. I would eventually like to grow enough food for us to eat for the entire year on top of, you know, buying meat from a local farm. And uh, I don't know how long it will take us to get there. I think it will take, you know, three to five years. But that's kind of my long-term goal is to get to a place where we're kind of just one with nature and, you know, we're not just benefiting from growing food, but the whole environment is benefiting from growing food. But yeah, so I want to share a little bit about me. It's very detailed, very public, um, but I hope that you, if you're struggling with something, you know that there is hope and that you can you can get to a place where you wanna be and you can get to a place where you feel like you're truly you. It just might take time and you might just have to explore to figure out what that is for you. So, um, but the biggest takeaway I wanna leave with you is like, there's hope and don't ever give up. And if you see someone struggling, if you see someone struggling, make sure to let them know how much you love them because it will make more of an impact than you ever know. So with that, I'll say thank you and I hope that you continue, continue to um, follow us on this journey.